This week, we saw the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation cooling more in December, PCE falling below 3 percent, the slowest annual rate in nearly three years. And the economy slowed less than expected in the fourth quarter, growing at 3.3 percent versus the 2 percent forecast. All of this data aligns with what my next guest predicted last fall. Joining me now is KKR's balance sheet CIO, Henry McVeigh. Uh, Henry, great to have you back. Thank you for having me. Great to see you. So you've been saying that you thought that the consensus was wrong on inflation, that it was going to come down a little faster than expected, yeah. but that growth would stay stronger. That was right. What made you think that? And are those forces still in force? Okay. Two things are going on. One, in the private sector, uh, the unemployment rate is probably going to stay lower. And so that helped to drive growth a little bit better. The second is I think people are underestimating the impact of the fiscal spending under the Biden administration. And so we think about one third of GDP growth in 2024 actually will come from the fiscal impulse government spending. Will it continue? We have slower growth coming into 2024, but still 2 percent, which is pretty, pretty healthy. Inflation, I think, will come down cyclically this year. But overall, we, we ascribe to this higher resting heart rate for inflation. This cycle will be different. Now, that could affect stock valuations, which if you just look at the S&P as a whole, look kind of elevated about yeah. 20 times. You're looking deeper and you find some values in there. Where are you finding those? A Co couple of things I'd say. One is you have to separate kind of the Magnificent Seven. They're yeah. trading at almost 30 times. They're also growing almost that fast, 30 percent. You look at the rest of the market, it's trading about 16 times. And then you look at small cap or mid cap, it's really attractive. We do private equity where we're taking companies out of the public markets into the private markets to make them better. Last year was our most active year on public to privates across both infrastructure and private equity. So I think for your viewers, it should signal that there is value out there because we're clearly finding it. Which is interesting because with higher rates, you think that would be tougher, but you are finding those. Here's my question. Small caps have looked cheap for a long time. What is the catalyst that will get the investors to think, oh, wow, those are deals? I do think we, well, we've been in a record uh, increase of interest rates and typically sure. small caps uh, lag in that period. So I think yep. a couple things that will happen. One is, is that as rates come down, that will provide some ballast to the small cap arena. Second is it's highly unnatural for the market just to be concentrated in those mega cap stocks. So I think there'll be a broadening of market and be driven by flows. I also think it will lead you to more mid-cap stocks in some international areas as well. I want to ask you about that. But first, with inflation, there are some kinds of assets that will do better under that scenario, such as real estate. Give us your thoughts there. I think we as a firm have been very bullish on the move towards what we call real assets. We've been really emphasizing infrastructure. That's a huge business for us. I think a lot of times people think about toll roads or airports. Think about data, data centers. Think about transportation logistics. As the world kind of decouples from Asia versus the U.S., you need more of that transportation and logistics. And that's been a huge area of focus for KKR and its investors. Speaking of data centers, so you've got an interesting idea. Uh, everyone thinks AI, oh, NVIDIA. Well, that's a pretty pricey stock. NVIDIA, it's, it's also, they get literally hot, right? Data centers <laughs> get hot. You're looking at the cooling systems for data centers. Yeah, we own a company called Cool IT. We also have been really focused on just trying to think about the energy that's necessary to drive AI. Everybody is, you know, watches that one stock, NVIDIA. There are many other ways to play it, and there's going to be a shortage of the ability to get energy to the companies that need it to actually perform the AI. So we're trying, we, we view that bottleneck as an opportunity set. Looking for values um, overseas. 20 years ago, a friend of mine was a hedge fund guy. He said, don't buy Japanese stocks until inflation comes. Well, it took a long time. Inflation's finally there. And you say, yeah. Yeah. We've been very constructive as a firm on uh, Japan. I've been going to Asia since 1995. Wow. Japan is exiting deflation. Th there's a big theme there. Um, for, your, for your viewers, you can buy just small and mid-cap stocks as well as the big-cap stocks. The big-cap stocks are becoming much more efficient. They're shedding their assets. They're doing things with private equity like KKR where they're becoming more efficient. And then the government is really pushing the mid and small cap stocks in Japan to actually become more efficient in their in their corporate performance. And that you can access through an ETF or, you know, more institutional investors, you know, aligning with things that we do. All righty. Henry McVeigh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me again.